Hey, Ethan. Uh, this is my answer to your question about uh, issues with your shading settings in your model. Uh, by the way, I had um, I'd asked that this be set at uh, 146 transparency for a reason. I wanted these all to look the same when we took screenshots, but anyway, it didn't matter. Um, so let's what I've what I've done first is I've just I've separated out the shading. So I've got your horizontal shading. Uh, I separated out the vertical, what I'm calling volumes, because you did solids here. Then I switched those out to surfaces, and then I rotated the surfaces, and then finally I made a full panel for the south. So that's what we're looking at when we go to the, to the model. And, you know, the way this works is that I can turn these off, um, and what we're seeing here is what is... Um, what is on in the thermal model settings right now. So this represents what's here in the zones and um, in the, uh, like for example, your adiabatic boundary, which I need to talk to you about, um, and our shading. Okay, but so what did I do to, to I ran some models and did a little analysis. Um, one thing, by the way, is, you know, if you're ever like dealing with sort of small differences, you can switch from, I, I mean, in terms of site EY, you can switch from, IP to SI, um, and that's just larger units. So there's the distance between two numbers is more, so uh, we can it's more granulated. So I don't think I need that here, but well, let's see if I do. So if I between no shading and the horizontal shading, 48 to 46, that's a that's a understandable amount. You can see it, but I mean if we go to SI units, um, 151 to 157, 147, that's larger, and so we'll um, see. Basically, we're saying it's you know it's rounding up to the closest whole um, integer, and so uh, the, the the larger distance we have between those, the more we'll be able to see what's going on. So I um, started with no shade, and I got you know this is my output. And it's pretty makes sense. Then I added the horizontal shading that you had, and I think this is probably what you got. Um, I definitely got a difference, so that's working, right? And so what and what happens? Let's look here at the so the window's obviously in orange. Look at your losses first. So these are the, the windows themselves. Um, so that should stay the same between these two. We don't change the glazing package. And it does do that. What changes? Well, it's the, the gains up here. And we can see that um, we lose the, a lot of the gains in the winter, which we would want, which would improve our, our EUI, right? Because we're basically, when we have more gains here, we have smaller uh, gray heating bars, um, and therefore we use less energy. Remember, what all we're doing here is we're saying we're, we're going to create a balance on the below and above this black line. So if I have more gains in the cooling season than I have um, losses, I'm going to have to do um, air condition or you know, condition space. Um, if I, in the winter, have more losses down here than gains, I'm going to have to condition the space, which is what this gray boxes. I sure wish they would not made it gray. You can barely see it. Okay, so it's working. We know that our shading is working and it's making sense. It's basically, it's taking away um, this shading configuration. Your initial one, which is um, this, is uh, reducing the amount of sun hitting the windows all year round. Um, and so we get a, a net positive effect on our site EUI because we are uh, having less of a cooling load. And we can tell that also by coming here. And looking at our cooling load, you'll see that it goes down quite a bit when we switch to the, the uh, overhangs. Okay, so then what? Um, so the next thing I did is I just I did, did what, what you had, which is I used those vertical shade volumes. And I think you're right here. There's absolutely no change. And what that meant to me was I think that those don't work. I think that maybe, and I don't know this for sure, but I think what we're doing here is we're, is we're Simulating using surfaces always. Um, think about the daylighting was that way. The um, thermal analysis is that way. So when we have a volume, I mean, I'm not saying it's always bad to have a volume. We can obviously we had full um, thicknesses of um, uh, you know of walls in our daylighting, and just uh, and when we applied a material to that, it seemed to be fine. Um, again, that's just blocking the sun. It's not being nuanced in any way. So anyway, um, I, I I said okay, well, let me test it. I'm I'm going to now, um, 
switch from volumes to surfaces. So I, went from, I did the same. I just took the surfaces um, on your volumes and you know I just uh, made analog surfaces. And now I do get a slight change. It doesn't change. It's not enough to even give me one EUI, but that's like a pretty big amount, right? 148 EUI, 12 divided. That's 12 per month, right? So that that's only 12 per month. So to have a by changing one variable to have a full um, EUI uh, per year change um, is you know it, it's something. It's not trivial. Okay. So anyway. Um, but we do we did get some some variation and what happens we're, it looks like we're getting um, a little bit of a drop in the southern um, uh, gains which we didn't want to have and then uh, and we're getting the slightest maybe not really much I, I don't really see any change here in the summer um, so what I'm seeing is basically a little bit of, of a bump there and again this is not you know we could we could download you can download all the um, the data down here and look at this in detail if you wanted to. Uh, I think for what we're doing, we don't want, we don't want to spend the time on that. So I'm saying I think it's working. It's just really almost having no effect. So the next thing I did was um, I rotated those um, surfaces to 90 degrees. If you look at it, it's still not a huge amount of blockage uh, in that direction, but it should be more. Um, so let's see what we get there. So we're saying we're going from uh, horizontal shade to rotated um, shade surfaces and there we do get um, an actual bump in the site UI it actually goes up and we can come down and analyze why um, yeah we see that we're we are going to lose a lot more in the winter which kind of makes sense we're on the south side um, if we're focusing on the south side we're going to and we're putting in shading, we're going to reduce our gains in the winter much more than we're going to reduce our uh, gains in the summer. And that's not what we probably want to do here. We don't have that many gains in the summer. And if you, like you said, if we add this rotated shading, very little reduction, but a lot of reduction in the winter. So that, so we've actually gone backwards. This so far is our best, 147. Now we're at a rotated, um, these small surfaces, and we're, we've, we've gone backwards in terms of our, our EUI. Final thing I did just to go, okay, is that really working? Let's just go all the way and just put in a complete surface here. Um, so, you know, it's essentially blocking the direct sunlight on the south side. And here we have um, a fairly considerable change. Uh, and it's what we would expect. We have now no gains in the winter, very small gains in the summer. I guess they're coming in from the side here, you know, the east and the west. We could experiment with that. Um, so let's go back and forth between those two. Um, horizontal. Uh, so the point is, I think that this is definitely working. It just was, you, I think the, the first, it was like two, two problems. One was that you were using these volumes uh, here that I don't think work uh, to block the sun in this uh, configuration. If you go look it up, it basically says that you need surfaces, um, and I guess they mean it. Um, but we could do further studies to see if that's true. So that's one thing I think that, that threw you off. And then I just think that the uh, the variation is pretty small. And so maybe once you saw it, you, you got confused since you had the volumes. Uh, and maybe you didn't really do any other changes other than that. So that, that would have explained it. Now we're seeing that there is actual changes, um, but they're not huge. One other thing I wanted to show you is that you have uh, an adiabatic boundary set, not a ground boundary. So this... And, the, and that's orange here, your, your floor, um, that's not accurate. So an adiabatic boundary, that if you look that term up, term up it, or at least in our context, it means that if we had, let's say, for example, this was an apartment and this was a, this was a party wall out here. Um, so this wall right here was connected to another apartment. And we said they're in the same building, they have the same heating and cooling system, or at least for the, the purposes of our uh, analysis, we're going to say there's no heat loss through that space. So that's or through that surface. So that's adiabatic. That's what it means. Your ground condition is completely different than that. There's definitely heat loss through the ground, but it is um, going to be different than heat loss through the air because it's a different physical environment. Uh, and so there's definitely things I wanted you to look at there because you would, you, you would learn something about, um, you know, when because basically we would be looking at 
uh, the winter months in terms of heat loss into the ground com as compared to the winter. And we would, if we're losing more uh, heat into the ground in the summer, um, it's possible that we that we would not want to insulate underneath the ground, right? So this would be about right now we're uh, well, it'd be about checking our um, our envelope down the road and playing around with insulation levels and deciding if we wanted to insulate or not based on these outputs. Okay, I think that's it. Um, let me know if that makes sense to you. If not, of course, we'll talk about it. All right, talk to you soon.